What's going on guys over here and welcome back to a brand new video today on F1 2017 and today we finally have some career mode gameplay with the F1 2017 career mode trailer dropping. Firstly, I need to say huge props to Cody's. I think they kind of listened. I, I hope they, I, th I think this is kind of a, a result of that, of so many of us asking for actual career mode, you know, gameplay or details and, you know, just a trailer related to it because we've had so much classic stuff and finally they've actually dropped a really, really awesome, I think they've really done, done outdone them themselves for this trailer for the career mode so kudos to them they finally actually dropped the goods so let's get straight into it so the trailer starts off with a lot of panning shots uh detail shots of the cars we're gonna get to that later in the video we'll get to the kind of juicy stuff straight away uh, to kick things off but just a little comment on the shots they look a lot more high res than the first trailer we saw last week so i feel like that was maybe from a previous build because of the, all the shots they've had of the cars in this trailer look a lot more high res and just rendered up uh, that's just the thought but anyway, we're going to kick things off here with obviously the, the expanded career mode that we had from last year. They've changed it up. They've built on it. So obviously last year we had a PR agent, Emma Jenkins. You can see on the bottom right there. Uh, but in the previous, in F1 2016, you were in the paddock for the entire time. It was one room in the paddock. Uh, you were sat there for the desk. Your engineer um, would come up to you. Your PR agent, Emma Jenkins, would come up to you. You know, basically any interaction you had was in that paddock. Now they've gone a step further. They've kind of changed it up. They've changed um, lo different locations with in the actual race pattern to give you more immersion of you being a driver. You know, you're going to walk around. So now Emma has her own office now. So you, you can see here we're kind of knocking on her door. Um, so we go into her office. She, that's where we're going to get all the contracts and everything like that. You can see in the bottom right. Um, so anything like, you know, driver contracts um, that we get after races, you know, if we, we're performing badly, she might call us in, you know, tell us off or anything like that. If we're doing well, she'll come in and, you know, compliment us on how we're driving and whatnot. But that's going to be done in this separate different room. You can see handing us a contract there but then at the same time we still have that paddock area that we had from before so that will also be another place where we interact with her so it can be kind of either or basically but they try to essentially just split everything up a little bit further try and just flesh out the world basically I would say that's the best way to explain it fleshing out the career mode immersion, if you will, of, of what, what we are in the world of Formula 1. Then we move on to 115 development upgrades. This is the R&D tree that I was talking about, and I actually quite, I think, looking back on it now, I kind of accurately quite, you know, I remember it quite well from that testing that I did in March, because in that video, uh, you can see in the bottom, in the top right, by the way, uh, that I talked about the R&D tree, um, I sketched it out, and now we actually get to see what it looks like. If we go here to this shot, you can see the entire, well, not the entire tree, but just about the entire tree. You've got aerodynamics on the bottom, Bottom on the uh, well, your right hand side, it'll be the chassis uh, chassis department. On the right, on the left hand side is the engine department, and then the top, I believe, it's basically stuff like uh, the gearbox, fuel saving. Um, and just little kind of smaller parts of the car like that. Obviously, the three major ones are going to be uh, chassis, aerodynamics, and the engine power. And then you can see the diagonal ones that I was talking about back in that R&D video. Those will be more kind of team building R&D aspects. So I think the I think that very top right one is going to be yeah top right there. I'm, I'm trying to look at where I'm pointing on the video. Uh, top right over there. I think that one is going to be um, how fast your team turns around R&D upgrades. I believe there's also one to improve the uh, rate at which your parts fail because if you do an R&D part, if you upgrade a part, it, there is a chance of it failing. Like you, you're not just going to get a 100% guarantee you will get this part. It may fail, so you also have to maybe build that up in your team, and you might want to spend some resource points on doing that aspect. So when you do get an upgrade, you can get it to the point where it's near enough, never going to fail, and you always will get that upgrade when you want it to. And then you've got some other team building aspects on the other two branches. But if we go a little bit closer, you can see you've got five out of 26 for aerodynamics, so that'll just be the aerodynamics. Tree has 26 different um, things that you can upgrade. They're all not weighted the same, just like it was from last year. They're all weighted very, very differently. And you can see they kind of try to make that distinction with how they're shaped. So you've got just normal kind of hexagons. Then you've got bigger squares. Then you've got larger rectangles um, to try and kind of distinguish larger upgrades from one another. And then when you've done the upgrade, they'll get colored in. Whilst they're being done, they kind of get half colored in. So you can see the progress quite nicely. So it's, it's, a, it's a very nice chart to look at as you progress through. Really, really, um, you know, lovely work they've done with the UI this year. Uh, you can see going through there, you know, you can see the halfway stage for what will that be? I don't know. It kind of looks like a... 
almost like a damper, a, a, a damper or something, or even suspension maybe, or something like that, or, um, I don't know, springs, um, but it goes halfway colored, so you can see the progress there, and then when it fills up, that'll go completely blue, and you can see that they're making their way through, so you have to choose when it branches out where you're going to spend your resource points, and you may get it wrong, you may get it right in terms of where you need the performance, that's for you to decide, you know, if you're, you know, let's say in, uh, you know, Salba, you know, with a lack of aero, you're going to really want to have to spend quite well on this, but also at the same time, these don't all cost the same. So you need to kind of work it out for yourself and kind of see uh, which one's going to be the best path to take. You know, that may be cheaper, but it may not give me the upgrade that I was expecting or that I need. So there's a lot of variety. And I think as Lee Mather said in many, many interviews, uh, the guys who designed this system have like a whole spreadsheet and can kind of like see which one th in theory is going to work the best. But obviously as players, we have no clue. And it's going to give a completely unique exp experience to every single one of you guys. Um, you know, when you, if you watch my video or other YouTube YouTubers videos and compare back to yourself it's gonna be a completely different experience because you may go one way I may go another way um, and it's great it's great because it, it, it doesn't mean that everyone's just having the same exact bog standard career mode which I feel like in 2016 kind of didn't happen at the start but eventually most people kind of sussed out which upgrades were best to do for certain cars and so you always knew what was the best way whereas this time around I highly doubt it's gonna be a very easy process to suss out Okay, so it's this set of upgrades that you have to do for this car, which are kind of the best ones. I don't think there's going to be a best one necessarily, um, un unless, I mean, the only people that will know that will be the developers, really. But you can see going through the chassis as well, we've got 3 out of 21 for the chassis, so you can make your way through there. You can see, um, and this guy's quite interesting, on this tree, you can get uh, that one that just branches off. So that's like one... I would assume it's quite a big square, so I'd assume that one would be a much larger upgrade, but you can see that you're having to waste going branching out upwards rather than going right and continuing your R&D development path. So again, another kind of choice for you to make and one that you may go differently to your mates or anything like that. And then up here is, as I said, I think this looks like the gearbox, the turbo. Um, and so just smaller kind of parts like that where it's not like the big areas like the aerodynamics and whatnot So as we go through the animations as well, you can see on the uh, left hand side over here just above my little webcam um, You can see five different colored um, Symbols being being lit up as we go through the trees like you can see as as we go on You can see the hearts get lit up. So basically that'll be essentially things like um, almost like I would say like loyalty almost of like doing the doing the same department almost but you can that's where you, that's where you get the upgrades of like you know they'll be perhaps cheaper all round so you can get like um essentially resource points off all the chassis all the chassis if you were to upgrade that basically then we move on to new practice programs obviously practice programs were the new thing for f1 2016 they've changed them up a little bit and changed them around to make a bit more sense now we've got a fuel saving program in there which obviously is going to be a big factor um you know it should be a big factor in in the in, you know the current f1 regulation saving fuel you may want to go lower that wasn't a, a practice program in f1 2016 i believe it was only it was tire wear and then it was qualifying pace and then race pace, but they never really had a specific just save fuel. Like there was, uh, you had one off goal, you had that one off goal of doing a lap in lean mixture, but I don't believe there was an actual one for um, practicing your fuel saving. And obviously that will kind of help people home in their skills of, you know, lifting and coasting, using higher gears and short shifting, which, you know, obviously maybe you and I who play F1 a lot will know about, but then there's plenty of casuals that may not know about, you know, lifting off and, you know, just coasting into the corner or, you know, up shifting earlier to kind of save the fuel. And then here is a nice little thing here actually as we go through turn one in the force india uh with someone called vernon um you can see that he's done three laps and he completes the program so thankfully they've tweaked it now where if you smash the targets like you can see in the in the in the top right if you get all purple you do not have to do annoyingly all five laps like you do in 2016 where you know you, you've completely smashed the qualifying target but you have to do one more qualifying lap just for the sake of it that will no longer be the case you just do the three if you completely you know just do you get every single mark you can get you get the 100% completion purple you don't need to do it you can just finish it and that'll be fine the next big one car management and reliability obviously a huge part of this year's game very very different for this year's game so I need to kind of move this screen around a little bit and try and 
show you off a little bit um, nearer. So we're going to zoom in now to this first kind of um, little quarter, I would say. Right, so we've kind of zoomed into the top left here. So you can see this is the power unit management screen. So uh, straight away, you get the kind of expected lifespan of your power unit as a whole. Uh, you get the overall wear. So that adds up from all the different areas that are being worn out. So if I just move this screen on the left here, just up here, so you can just see it, you can see the different parts of the engine. So you've got, you know, the MGUK, the MGUH, the actual internal combustion engine just itself, energy store, turbocharger, control electrics. So all of those will add up and tot up to that top overall 50% wear. Um, so you get a kind of more general sense of what's going on. And then you can see you pick your four different components, just like in real life. You can see obviously yellow is going to be kind of halfway, orange towards completely gone green completely fine so you'll want to you know try and try and tactically choose where you want it maybe you know if you if you're in the mclaren for example you go to monaco okay you may not you know may not need to go all green or you go to monza and you may want to have all green you need to have the maximum performance you want there because obviously the mclaren's gonna you know be, be a bit lacking in straight line speed down uh, down the straight to monza so you want all green on the engine to perform as best you can and then as we pan over here whilst you drive you can see that wear going on as well so you can manage it whilst you race so it's something added in that now you may have to actually play a little bit tactically in a race not about just going flat out every single lap and just not caring about your car you're gonna have to maybe check it once in a while see oh no i'm wearing out the you know the oh the turbo is going a little bit so that's why maybe the ai are catching me now down the straight because because my turbo has gone or you know maybe your your mguk is lacking a little bit or mguh so maybe that's why you're not getting the acceleration off the corner or something like that from the turbo when it kicks in and that's going to be the same thing with the gearbox as well. You can see on the uh, on the on the right here, the gearbox is also there along with all the engine parts. So that's another thing. The gearbox itself is a different management to the engine. It's engine and then gearbox as a separate entity. And the gearbox obviously has its own kind of rules uh, within Formula One, obviously of how much you can change them. You get a certain number of gearboxes. You can't. You have to keep a gearbox for a certain number of rounds before you change it. So if you are having a really worn gearbox, you may need to take a penalty. Obviously, we've seen that many many times in real life where you know Hamilton we've had Ricardo we've had you know Hulkenberg we've had many different gearbox changes in the real life season where you know they've qualified well but then they get stuck with a five place grid penalty and that's unfortunately something a hit you just may have to take if you have to change it way too early I believe when we tested the game this was something that happened to uh, Harry um, in testing was that around Monaco he lost a gear mid race in Monaco and so he had to kind of work around that and then he had to swap out the gearbox the very next race a bit too early and then got a penalty for it so it's something that definitely will penalize you if you're not careful careful about that and certainly going to be something that you're going to have to take care of uh you know and that's pretty much basically an onus on people like me who completely wreck wreck the gearboxes and kind of like rev out the gear range basically that's going to be something that's probably going to hinder me in career mode now when I go to play it um come at the end of August as I was saying about the gearbox, here we go. That's actually the screen on the left-hand side um, uh, toward the bottom now. So you can see it's a different kind of UI screen to the engine one. So they've kind of separated it. Again, you see overall wear. That obviously, there's no components to it. The, they don't give you individual like gear components. So that's just overall wear, basically. But you can see completed number of races, one of six. So if you do do it earlier, you're going to get the penalty. And then upgrades as well. You can upgrade the gearbox to kind of stop it from you know, being less crap, basically. So as we move through here, I'm just going to kind of just slowly kind of move through. You can see some of the animations. And then the McLaren engine, obviously, Codemasters props once again. You did Jolian Palmer dirty last time in the trailer. This time you done not find out Alonso dirty around Bahrain. So obviously, his is the engine to fail for the sake of the trailer. Bad day in the office there for Fernando. And then he has to go and get interviewed and uh, grilled. And then we move on to a quite interesting uh, thing, finally, to see a little bit, a glimpse of the alternative layouts of all the circuits now. So we get a confirmation this is Bahrain, Silverstone for the alternate layouts. We've seen Bahrain before in some of the gameplay we saw from E3, but now we can see Silverstone there. I don't, I don't believe we've seen Silverstone, the short layout. So this looks like it's going to be basically where this is village. Now, normally you would turn left and go down towards Luffield, but you're going to continue on, go straight, and you're going to end up uh, going down the back the back straight, the other thing straight, towards Stowe. And then Kota and uh, the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka there. So you can see USA, obviously, they've had the shortened layouts in other racing games like Forza and stuff before so cool that we've now got it at, uh, in the f1 game as well classic cars obviously they've talked a lot about them but now they're integrated into the career mode and now we get a bit of a glimpse of how that's going to happen so this is the rich guy that we've been uh that we've been told about before that's going to be part of the career mode so we've got emma who's the pr agent we've got the engineer so he's going to be obviously talking about your car and now we've got a third kind of character basically they're just touting him as like a really rich 
like millionaire billionaire who owns all these classic cars and invites you to invitational events to drive them basically in between career modes which is i feel so so great because it will break up the career mode experience it won't get repetitive oh, i'm just doing 21 races 21 races 21 races you've got this kind of breakup of very different game modes as you go through you've got overtake challenge mode where we've seen this before from the e3 gameplay you start off in one of the faster classic cars and you have to try and overtake the slower cars they start off further ahead of you basically um, so that's the kind of pursuit challenge there as we go through Japan and just 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 know once again I said it in the last in last week's video it's it, I will admit it's very very cool to see all the different car the classic the classic cars or previous cars kind of be on the same track we got checkpoint mode with Red Bull here as we go down Monza so again another casual kind of game mode to kind of play within the career mode time attack as well you can see the lovely actually for the first time actually we should just pause it there for the first time we see the onboard of the McLaren car absolutely looking sweet as ever bloody rocket ship I love look at this car it looks absolutely awesome but um going through and these will all be available in the career mode as well as you know separately away from the career mode so you do want to play these game modes away from the career mode you can do but they're going to be integrated into the career mode to kind of give you that difference and break in between the different races and then single and multi-class classic races as i said as i mentioned you can play them outside the career mode and that's what i'm talking about in multiplayer you can do multi-classes as well and then single player as well you can do multi-classes look at that that's just insane just to kind of look at again that's a shot from like the previous trailer but these ones are new through Suzuka. Just looks epic. Upper Rouge with the Red Bull. Pretty damn sweet. And then we get to Monaco at night. Obviously, we saw it in the last trailer. But unless you are, if you're too casual of a fan, you maybe have not noticed it, uh, perhaps. Um, but now they kind of give us a bit more gameplay. And we've got the classic cars on board shot. Look at that. Look at that. This looks just, just so awesome. The scenery and everything. It's just a spectacle to see Monaco at night. Oh, look at that. That's just cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's all. I can't. I said in the in the in the video last week, but uh, that's like one of the first things I'm doing. Monaco at night has to be one of the first races I do personally. I mean, just look at that. Seeing seeing that MP44 through Monaco at night. That's sweet. That's sweet. I will admit that. That's that's one thing that the classic cars are pretty damn sweet for. But um, yeah, that's been the career mode trailer. Obviously, I mentioned before that I would go back here. I just wanted to point out, as I said briefly at the beginning of the video, all these shots look so much more high res than the previous trailer. So I get, I get the feeling that maybe that was from a previous build. Um, but just little things, maybe little little note if you missed them. These numbers are custom numbers. So just showing off, obviously 23 is not a number the McLarens have. Neither is number four on the Toro Rosso. Uh, but then you just get Ericsson in a close up there. But all these shots look so much more high raised. Like the Red Bull car here looks pretty damn sweet in the rain. We get a really nice um, top down view, which looks sweet sweet you can really see how tight that red bull uh, rear end is but anyway that's been the career mode trailer breakdown pretty much i think that's all that needs to be said really if you do have any questions about anything i've talked about or anything you feel like i missed then let me know in the comments below and then i can try and answer them from this point onwards i've been told by cody's that i can talk about anything that i remember from testing so if you do have a question pop it down in the comments below and I can talk about it. Um, anything from this career mode trailer that I may have missed. If you have any more questions about this system, like anything that may I may have not covered that you want to know, let me know and I can tell you about that in the comments below. But if you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been an hour. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day, guys. If you have enjoyed the video and found it informative, hit that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.